go. I should put this thing over here. What's up, Sean? My man. It's a beautiful day. It is. It's actually quite nice over here in Salt Lake. It's been like blistering. I mean, you know how hot it's been because in California, mm -hmm. it's been hotter. But yeah, over here, it's just been on some blistering, super crazy heat in September. And then then just randomly, it's just kind of cooled down a little bit. So I'm like, yeah, cool. finally. So I'm down I'll enjoy a bit. it while it lasts. Hopefully it doesn't go back to hell mode. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it's just too late in the year for that. You know, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for it. Even though just know. big it, chilling yeah, in the basement. It's probably always September. Always September when it gets too hot, though. Like, this is when it's actually too hot. You work in the garage, so you have to, like, actually contend with the the heat and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I don't have, like, uh, central air in my house either. So we, when it gets too hot like that, because, it, like, it got up to, like, 115 here. Um, when it gets that hot, you just have to, you it's know. Try not to <laughs> perish. <laughs> yeah, you just deal with it. You just deal, mm -hmm. deal with it. So, Sean, what's been happening though, man? What's what's been going on? Well, I mean, it's been a while since you know, our last has, relic buds. It has, you know, summer is a weird time because, like, every weekend you're trying to do stuff, <laughs> mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. especially near the end of summer, you're like, oh, we need to go camping, we need to go hiking. We, we gotta go to before it's gonna get too hot in September. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. I went I mean, backpacking. Uh, I went backpacking with my friend. I went camping with my family. We went up to a lake and swam in a lake a bunch. You know, did some mm. good stuff. I've been I've been uh, playing around with some Warcry figurines. I got that new Warcry. Oh, box that's right. <laughs> so I those got are looking sweet. I've been together. kind of in the Warcry too. First, I've been painting these Stormcast guys because the I like stormcast but i like can never really you know that's never really bit down on any of the starter sets i got the soul wars one but then i was kind of not super excited because the sacrosanct ones are like ironically the ones that actually feature a bunch of robes and i was like man i want to paint armor guys though. i like those i like those i got that set i, I like I, yeah I like, I like them the, but i, I like realized i couldn't color, speed so. paint them as well because i was like wait i just can't spray them gold or something because they act, because then I actually have to go and paint all the robes. So I was like, oh, no, no. It's golden robe, like it, it no. wasn't that big. Anyway. I mean, well, I've seen, I've seen the way that you put together some sets, and my man is blazing with the brush. Yeah, I, know? I definitely don't. I definitely, I'm not very precious with my Games Workshop figures. <laughs> I'll just be like, I bought this so I can play with it. Like, Here it goes. I <laughs> put them together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah awesome right. And for me, oh, I yeah, was just like that's... collecting these guys because I just never had a reason to, and they're just painting up. It's it's been cool. It's been cool. Yeah. And my birthday weekend was uh two two well two weeks ago now at the time of recording, but just last Saturday I did like my birthday party, which was a really well thought out, well conceived um idea to host like a party for my friends invited all the peeps that i thought would be interested and i was like we're gonna play mork borg and i'm gonna run you through it's gonna be super straightforward easy not chaotic under control we got it and then in the in the middle of 12 people uh just talking i realized wow that's not those are not things like this is this is precisely what you signed up for you know like a complete chaotic uh, you doing what huh what is it? oh you need an eight no dr no uh dr difficulty rating you need to roll d20 not a dr eight no it's a d20 um you know just like all these little things that i'm just like uh i designed the dungeon for 10 rooms we were in we were in room two like three hours in and i was just like oh, yeah. bro no like you know it was a very good lesson it was a very well, you showed me before you ran the game. You showed me like a, a screenshot or the sketch, a, a snapshot of your sketch, and uh -huh. I was like, "Oh wow, you're doing like <clears throat> a campaign, a was, crawl." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? If you would have said that, I would have been like, "No, what do you mean a campaign?" So what? So, 
It's a one shot. Like it's gonna oh, a one we'll shot get, is a room, two rooms. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm realizing that as I stumble through my uh complete like newbery into the tabletop RPG space, but it's been a blast in Morkborg is just a very interesting and kind of like it's just so strange. It's so it's a it's accessible even though when you look at it it kind of almost looks like the most in, un, unaccessible thing, mm. you know, but man, what a, what a great game. It's I don't really... know. For me, when I pick up a Morkborg and it's, you know, less than an inch thick, I'm like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is playable. Whereas, oh, you for know, sure. you grab Pathfinder and I'm like, <laughs> wow, uh, where do you yeah. start? It goes into the territory of an of a inanimate object in which I yeah. classify it that Jason Bourne can kill someone with. Like if it well, I'm I mean I'm barely literate, so it's tough for me to be able to. Uh, I feel <laughs> I, I feel it sometimes when I be trying to write things, you know. Oh but man, yeah. speaking of literacy, <clears throat> the, all right. If we're so if we're taking some time to talk about what we've been up to, I've actually been Ooh. reading a lot, yes, and yes. I've been reading tons of Ursula Le Guin. Um, mm -hmm. holy moly, just life changing stuff. You mentioned been, it's funny you mentioned that and. I kind of wrote about this on my post when I was talking about the book, The Four Agreements. And I was like, mm -hmm. I usually will read books or interact with authors' works when they like present themselves to me almost like a, a serot what is the word? Like through serendipity, you know, just like just by happenstance or something. And you mentioned Le Guin. And I swear I've had interactions with like three different people that have just been mentioning, oh, yeah, I'm reading Le Guin, I'm doing this thing. I'm like, oh, my, my buddy said he was reading Le Guin. He's like, oh, yo, so sick, so awesome. And I'm like, that's what he she's, says. <laughs> she's, oh, my goodness. I just, like, oh, uh, yeah, I've been reading a collection of her novellas. And, like, so it's, like, you know, going through, like, a dozen short stories and just like time again and again she's just blowing my mind absolutely and then i've also i'm also reading the telling which is a, a full long length novel in the hainish cycle so like man oh man it just like gives me hope and just this whole gamut of like really powerful feelings going through her her work just, man and it's it's fiction, you, you're right? It's yeah, it's fiction. it's it's sci-fi, like I, it's full on about alien worlds. And I'm oh, like sci-fi, really? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you're like, so. That's interesting. I don't know why. For some reason, I was thinking something more like old world or something, like Victorian well, has, era or has, something like that. She has a couple of uh, she has a lot of she, a lot of writing. She has some like straight up just philosophy mm. that she writes, but um, but yeah, her two main like universes Man, I want to read are about alien worlds. The, Hainish cycle, which is sci-fi, um, and then the Earthsea cycle, which is fantasy. Damn. But, but like lots of really, really amazing stuff about like the power of language and the power of words and uh, you know gender norms and gender as a construct and all you know all this stuff that I'm like really nerdy about. Love that that uh, feminist gender theory plus sci-fi plus human. Uh, anthropology of dealing with religion and government and all this stuff. Yeah, just a people, smash and like, of and everything. And how it can be so personal, the way she writes. But I, I mean, I could talk. We could do this. Could be this the, could be the Le Guin podcast. Le Guin but podcast. Um, it's it's interesting though because all of these things really feed the creative, you know, aspects of that. And you know, with that, one thing that we've been exploring lately talking about fiction narratives is, you know, a whole new kind of format for relatively storytelling in our unique um, tabletop medium, which is, you know, part a storyteller that's giving narrative, but then has a system of delivery that is the rules that has the weird the, the weird uh the director it's just like the, the player and the cast and the their mm -hmm. models and all this unique interaction to create an interesting way to experience a story yeah it's true for sure i 
And with that, let's talk about what today's episode is. Oh, yeah. So what is today's episode about? It's Monday right now, 912. And in a couple of days, something's going down. Yeah. So we announced the next Relic Blade Kickstarter. And uh, likely anyone that's listening to this will have read the title of the episode and know like, oh, yeah, this is going to have info about the next Kickstarter. And and a big part of it is uh, this Kickstarter offers more than just new figures. And it's not just a new book like I've done that stuff before. Uh, and, and it's a lot like the previous Kickstarter in that it's... Uh, a set of figures with a campaign, but it is a direct continuation of the last Kickstarter. So let's let's uh, take a, a back step, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you, Malev, because early on, maybe 2016, maybe 17, you sent me a solo kind of uh, a early prototype for a Relic Blade solo. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. The, uh, ooh, something. You know what's also funny about that? Now that I'm thinking about the name of it, I can't. I called it like the Bloody Braziers or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's, if y'all have ever wondered why there's so many Braziers in Relic Blade, it, for whatever reason, I, when the, the scenario design was, there's, three magical braziers that have been like erected in this kind of graveyard um to create a barrier that keeps in these kind of malign spirits so mm-hmm. to speak yeah because they were they were wraiths that they were magic wraiths that you couldn't damage mm-hmm. in and that it, scenario yeah you could you could like hit them but they were like uh, comprised of like battlefield debris so they would just like explode and then like coalesque again into oh yeah they'd respawn yeah or yeah whatever. like you could that. damage them but it was it the, the the design of the scenario was really about having there be like this element of a never-ending um like horde sort of enemy and weird narrative framing to come up with that and needing to interact with the braziers to like activate them all and complete the thing and turn on the wall again and once they're all on then you can you know complete the scenario you know stop stop the race from doing it. and it was kind of this this idea of you know normal relic blade like so much of my early relic blade games because the first kickstarter was in 2015 for the two-player box set and i got that later that year i think i think you had a really quick turnaround on that one and then I sat on it for a while, I think like almost about a year. And then I ended up painting this, painting everything. I had the Battle Systems original Kickstarter, that dungeon one. And then so many of my first games of Relic Blade were just those. The Knight, Druid, Thief, Cleric, Spirit Weapon, and a Bear Form with the Druid versus the six Battle Pigs. Mm-hmm. And... That was like, oh gosh, I played maybe like 30 some odd games, maybe just, just by myself, just activating, rolling initiative, doing the things and having so much fun and just being like, man, this game is really good for like playing by yourself. Like I, it's kind of easy to do. And I, I feel like I'm really watching, even though I'm like, ex- yeah. even though I'm like kind of invested in something to happen it, it like doesn't matter because of the way that the activations work and yeah, the, how it the all activations sort of like tell a story in a way that like move and attack like you would with a normal game uh, kind of don't, a two action you know? like you kind really of game know. yeah whereas like you ran here you fo- what you focused on what you're swinging your sword at like you know and those choices and then the outcomes of them they do unfold a story so it does for real because like you there'd be moments where you know i gotta i pretty much oh i need the knight needs to take this guy down in this swing now because if he doesn't you know i don't have the ad to dodge and then you knock this dude down and then you just 
if if it happens, if it doesn't, you know, there's just like interesting drama either way. And mm -hmm. it sort of led me to think about, and, and at that point when, you know, in 2018 or 17, uh, when I started designing that first it one. Was, I remember because I opened the old document and it was like created in 2017 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I'm pretty it, it sure was... it might have been 16, but I know it wasn't by 18. Yeah, because it was like just trying to figure out a way to, you know, come up with a, a, just a way to play Relic Blade against mm -hmm. yourself and trying to exploring like the cool parts of the Relic Blade system and trying to figure out like the way that it activates, you know, and that was kind of where the activation chart was born. And there was, there's even an element of that design in that original one that still still have plenty of space to grow into that we didn't even like feature and it was this uh concept of uh you would nominate one model to be the torch bearer and oh, yeah, the, in the that. torch bearer because they had the torch in their hand were sort of uh, immune to certain negative effects and it kind of let you hedge your bets in certain situations mm -hmm. and stuff like that but yeah that was the the origins were super simple and in the three ministers that inspired me to like do it were there was a ten dollar box of warhammer fantasy chaos uh, Marie, uh chaos warriors the little like push fit shield and sword guys and it was just a box ten dollars and it came with three of them and i was like those look kind of cool they're like night guys i'll paint i'll buy those and paint them like ghosts kind of and those will be my enemies you know and then you know just started designing that thing based on that and this concept of like designing relic blade solo stuff that interacts with the monster chart because that's ultimately where like their abilities their the the wraith plate is what i called them their abilities came from the monster chart the spectral like inability to hit them kind of um idea was born from that monster chart with just a, a, a scenario special rule that's like you just can't damage them when the brazier is not active you know um or yada yada and just like all of the stuff that i that was there in the secrets handbook was all of the stuff that i took to you know design those enemies just with some cool models and then just imagining cool stuff, looking at all the things that you have I mean, in the Relic Blade Seeker's Handbook to from, let my imagination run. From where I was, uh, you sent me that document and I was like, I I, uh, I understood that people were interested in playing like PvE or whatever, or, or solo. But uh, you sent me that and I was totally convinced, of course, I sculpted the brazers. Oh, but, I know, right? That was funny. Yeah. Like, but like right away, that era for Relic Blade, like the game didn't have wizards yet. So I wasn't ready to like write those new game modes when it was so clear to me that like we needed yeah. so many more bad guys, so many more monsters, so many more good guys and heroes and knights and, uh, and wizards and rangers. Goblins, and, gnomes. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So, so finally now, uh, we're, it's 2020. We, I launched the new two-player set, Storms of Kural. Uh, you come and visit me, and we take what was going to be just like a insert with like a scenario. And yeah. like we start like really getting like riffing off each other and growing. And like, and so then I get on my computer and I clack out this, this big lore list, and we ended up producing the book that came with the Storms of Kural set. So that had yeah. the lore in it. And then also through the Kickstarter campaign, we made a stretch goal for you to finish, for me to be able to pay you to finish writing a set of solo adventures. Yeah. So, uh, but then that, that created yes. like two puzzle pieces where I wanted you to write those solo adventures and we'd refine them into a game system for Relic Blade Solo. But then also that like blossom of ideas where the storms of corral set was going to be you know one one scenario and turned into a, a, a small campaign book um so then as you wrote the adventures and the scenarios 
based on like I gave you a few outlines like we knew we wanted to build on the card based campaign from Catacombs of Kral. Yeah. So that uh, as you were exploring a dungeon, you'd flip cards to reveal what scenario, you know, as you're exploring the dungeon, like where you're entering. And then um, we knew that we wanted to have the upgrades as cards and the characters as cards. And so we had like cool ideas going uh, uh, that it'd be a card driven campaign. Um, but then as you, as you wrote the dungeon encounters and then I was playing them and feedback and, you know, we going through this like a uh, very collaborative process to make that. Uh, I also started really digging into and writing the lore for the adventure. And so where that adventure was going to just use like mo wild monsters generated with the monster chart, yep, like your original just, setup, mm -hmm. um, I ended up having all this, you know, all this, this unearthing the lore of the catacombs of Coral and creating all those sculpts, yeah. and new, new sculptures, new monsters, understanding the format what kind of creatures there'd be what kind of rules we'd write and like so it ended up going from being a small thing mm -hmm. that was a stretch goal into a whole uh, other awesome thing and so my intention now because we wrote the book illustrated the book sculpted the models you did studio paint jobs of the models. I photographed the models. We've got all of the book written and laid out and designed and ready to print. It looks awesome. And, it, and it's awesome. Yeah, it's really And so cool. that promise to the Storms of Corral backers to get them a PDF, I am going to fulfill this Friday. Yes, that and, is hype. And so Catacombs of Corral is oh, going to be available on... The PDF will be available on relicblade.com this week, which is like we've been working on this for a long time. This week, people yes. will be able to go and fight through those battles. Um, and and all of the backers from the previous Kickstarter are getting their copy of the PDF. Now, as far as all of the other work we did, that's where the Kickstarter comes in that I want to be able to print the book, uh, all of the awesome cards that uh, are associated with it, as well as the monsters from that that have developed now all the all the way into a fully playable Relic Blade. The Ox Soul. Yeah. Yes. So it's like, it's a little hard to explain, you know, I'll go blue in the face trying to explain it all, but like, uh, it, it's a really very cool thing that we've created. And, it, and it's part of this like, bouncing ideas back and forth, uh, creating more from from what we originally set out to do, and then also hoping to really deliver to the Kickstarter backers something that is, like, way cooler than even we, like, intended. And, and in that's... Yeah. It, it really is, and that's that's super hype, because, yeah, the, the PDF deliverable, fully playable you know yeah. uh, and it's a, it's play tested it's running it, yeah through, it's yeah, that being said though uh with yes. with this cool unique opportunity uh because we're not because it's not printed yet and that's what the kickstarter yeah. is about uh you know if you see typos and stuff <laughs> yeah, you can you can let us know before yeah, we print yeah. it because that'd it's, be sweet um but yes like this has been it's it's interesting because looking back at it, it's it's a it's a perfect fit, you know. All of these different elements that are like clicking together, like just even going to the uncharted scenarios um, in the Seeker's Handbook. Like so much of my experience with designing that stuff and behind the scenes, so much solo like. You know, like in the movies where there's the, like the montage of someone trying to work on something and they like have they, they're doing basketball tosses of the paper into the, the waste bin and it's like filling up with papers that they've crumpled and thrown, you know, like that's what the solo design you know, like there's just so many scenarios on the floor and these ideas and these mechanics, you know, that were that were had so much potential but the the thing that was kind of needed was how does it fit like how does it all fit and you know the original design the thing that we made back then on the 
the Kickstarter goal was really uh, me just being like, you know, like tugging on your sleeve and being like, hey, Sean, hey, Sean, can I put, can we put a solo thing in the Kickstarter? Can we, hey, Sean, you know, and like, so we just ended up being like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. I got all these things written. I got the stuff, you know, but the original idea was essentially like dungeon crawl and you fight, it was called the decrepit depths and you fought the depth denizens, which were, you know, just monsters that used stuff from the monster chart. And the idea was like, Hey, you like relic blade go in this dungeon, you know, but mm -hmm. that, and that was cool. And that framework being like the foundation was took a lot to form into that, but even still then, you know, like you said, there was still so much like, like stripping back and, and adding to, and just yeah. molding. Yeah, definitely. It's not just a process of adding. It's also, it's a major process of editing and then also like logistics things like it'd be dope to do the decrepit depth solo. And now that we've figured out the format, I have, every intention to make that adventure but like uh you know the question for me as as the artist and also the like practical guy where i have to actually get molds made of stuff um like i don't want to sell that short without beetle monsters and so right, then I right. have the yeah, question yeah. like, oh, how many beetle monsters am I gonna sculpt? Yeah, because that was and the then stuff. also like tying the lore in together where with this it continues the the storms of it's based on the storms of crawl box set. Like it uses the cards from it and the tokens from it. Um yep. and in that way it's a continuation of that story. Um well not in a way, it is a continuation of that story. And it opens up this new faction that is now gonna be released in um like the events of the catacombs release those monsters from the underworld onto mm -hmm. upon the world of relic blade. And so in that same way, like as you play, you will play with your favorite relic blade characters against these new ones, understand their lore and their background and their story and, and like paint them and, and discover them as a complete playable game that you're going to be able to go head to head or you against it, or also gather your friends and introduce them to relic blade in a way where they aren't playing against you, but rather you're all working together against this faction. Yep. And then uh, um, from there, the resolution will continue as these, uh, or the results of the campaign unleash these this new faction on the world, this, this army of barbaric apes. And so uh, it's like, it's a very cool... Uh, I just love it the this the way that it unfolds it like it grows. Out yeah, like I was saying, world. it's yeah. it's fit in a way that is is just right. You know, like the original Deb's Denizens, like I said, was just monster chart stuff, and then when we did the summer campaign and we had the actual like the weird online anybody can be involved kind of contribute their results. Um, what oh, I can't I think I'm trying to remember what I called it now I guess it was just called the decrepit depths campaign oh, yeah. yeah it was decrepit it was just decrepit, decrepit depths yeah and that was on on for for those of you listening and in the discord in and 2020 we ran a online campaign for mm -hmm. relic blade and it went it went awesome mm -hmm. it was a ton of fun um and Malev was writing, generating a lot of, uh, or all the scenarios and lore and everything. And then I was just like kind of jamming it into a PDF to get it out to people. It drawing cool playing. stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it so was, that was all, a really cool. Way and it created the out. Beetle Legion, which was these yeah. things yeah. that were like this, you know, it, the proto, the, the narratively similar proto kind of idea to like the Og Sewell, but like mm -hmm. the Og Sewell everything like fits because like i think if i was to look at what i wrote in the decrepit depths that's like you know your um your you, you, like the season six writer comes in and they're like okay i think i understand kind of what relic blades about let me start writing you know and then it's kind of like it's got like some things that are like yeah that's cool you know and some things that are a little bit maybe you know that they don't come from like sean's mind and so like all of those things getting kind of like coalesced and like filtered and 
earth you know, transforming into the true relic blade form you know like the in the dragon ball z analogy there that is just the first form you know and they're and the the storm the catacombs of Coral is the is like the fourth level transformation yeah. of the creation and now we, so, it's at most powerful ever but but that's also uh, an important thing to point out like catacombs of crawl is a booklet so it's the same size as the uh, storms of crawl campaign mm -hmm. book it's a little bit thicker right now because of like the extra six, rules 64 and stuff yeah. pages um it's like 64 pages long there's lore and there's rules and then there's the campaign with the with the scenarios and then a, a section with optional rules also for different play styles, depending on whether you're playing with, um, yeah, depending on what kind of flavor you want, whether you want more detail into your champions or you want to keep it card driven, yeah. or if you want to play with, rather than using the um, game engine to direct the enemies, if you want to have one player controlling the enemies, that kind of optional stuff. But uh, the intention here is that we'll have built the engine for solo Oh, yes. and co-op style play so that we can continue to tell stories and create new adventure content where like I'd love to be able to have cooperative campaign at adventure or, or scenarios along with um, you know head-to-head -head scenarios and like create like kind of a hybrid yeah yeah uh, for sure look from there but this book is is the first solo and it's a it's really an awesome kind of dungeon adventure where you're dealing with uh dangerous traps and dark corridors monsters that are howling and chasing you through the the tunnels um very very cool classic dungeon crawly uh adventure well actually dungeon crawl doesn't quite hit it i don't want people to get the idea that they're going to be playing like a long slow dungeon crawl it's more like it's a timer. It, it's, it's more a, like a, a, an exciting encounter. Yes. In, the, in when Dungeons I think about it, yeah. is like at and I for some reason think I've mentioned this on Relic Buzz before, but um, at the end of Halo One, where you got to drive the warthog, as like everything is exploding around and the whole level is just like this oh, action yeah. packed, survive. like yeah. just driving and jumping and things are exploding. It's sort of like that. But what's there's, you know, almost like earthquakes around you happening. And then on top of that, every time you like turn around and like look behind you, like and as the, the door that you just closed, you know, shut and just got a moment to breathe, whoo, whoo, you run away from that door and then that door is like immediately kicked down. And then there's just a whole bunch of dudes ah, just yeah. trying to chase. So it is a very... Like, but, but also the like the play experience isn't just <clears throat> you're being chased. It's oh, also yeah. very much like you're entering a. It's like a D and D encounter where you've got you've got the puzzles that you have to solve, but there's also monsters, and you've got to have like your one character run over and solve the puzzles while the other character is punching the and holding off the big monsters. Exactly. And so it's it's got a very cool like dungeon encounter setup where you've got like an exciting D, &D scenario or not, D &D is not the right word but like yeah um so anyways i i think the campaign that we wrote catacombs of crawl is awesome and then on top of that uh the kickstarter really like the the book if it was just the book and that's all i was making um that's pretty easy to deliver you know like I can print a book, mm -hmm. but part of it is that with it, we've created a, a whole new faction as well. Yeah. Where there's 10 new metal miniatures, uh, really nice sculpts that i like took a lot of time to refine and make sure they were going to be really nice. And they're amazing. Like the, to paint, uh, there's some, like there's some of the best relic blade ones yet. Yeah. That's so good to hear. And, uh, and then on top of that, you know, all the cards, like uh, new faction cards with exciting new game mechanics for the, that implications for the whole of Relic Blade with universal upgrades like the runes, 
uh, new barbarian upgrades that really are going to affect you know, various factions in, that already exist in Relic Blade, particularly... Oh, and Warlord oh, yeah. keyword and Warlord. upgrades. So, so like the Lone Guard, the Battle Pigs, uh, the Wilderkin, they're all going to really get like a good boon from these upgrade options. So uh, introducing this new faction is also a big part of it, where it's more like my older Kickstarter campaigns where the main thing I was doing is trying to get new factions out. Except it's it's that there's an adventure that they're tied to. There's more than one way to use the figures. You know, they aren't just wild monsters and they aren't just characters because the, the um, fulfillment of the campaign will include monster cards for all of those characters. So yes. you'll be able to use them not just in Catacombs of Kural, but in any wild monster uh, type of encounter that you'd run into in Relic Blade, which, you know, given the setting where the Ogsul have escaped from the underworld and are raiding across the world, like, makes perfect sense. As you're playing nope. Relic Blade, Just you're throw very them likely in. to have these guys, like, howling and jumping off of things and hitting you with a club. Yeah, and it gives cool ideas for campaign and narrative play stuff, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's, a, in a lot of ways, it's a full-on you know, classic Relic Blade Kickstarter where you've got a bunch of cool new models, tons of new cards, and also a, a campaign book to go with it. Um, but the thing that's a little bit different is that it leads directly from the Storms of Corral events and flows right into this. So uh, in some ways, like, I feel nervous going to Kickstarter, like, oh, well, not everyone has Storms of Crawl or not everyone. I don't know, like, I feel like I'm making episode two of a, of yeah, a show. Yeah, so... But at the same time that you... So <laughs> I think... not really limited in that way. Yeah, it is. So. And I think that that does bring something kind of uh, interesting that I want to bring up. <clears throat> that the Kickstarter, Storms of Crawl was really successful. And, like, right. man, opening the Storms of Crawl like package was like crazy right so many new models so much crazy stuff to the point where yes I, I, we still have to paint some of the storms of coral models myself you know like we still i still play and catch up you. and things like that you know it's still um but when we talked about going to kickstarter we had sort of some reservations we want to keep it focused you know we want to in some ways yes the classic relic blade uh kickstarter um just in the sense that you know that's that it's bringing all that same goodness that has been out in the past but in this one i think when it comes to the stretch goals and when it comes to add-ons i think this time we're going to make it a little different and you mentioned people not having the storms of coral and mm -hmm. this is what's kind of going to maybe be important for people to understand about this Kickstarter is that the Kickstarter is for the catacombs of Corral. And so you don't, you don't like need the Storms of Corral play it. You don't need it, but. No, you, it, you, I mean, sort of you do because you need the cards for it. So I'm going to. Oh, gonna oh yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you do. You, you do need the, the main, you, the main card. I mean, uh, you, you do, but if, uh, yeah, anyway, um, the people who don't have, if you don't have Storms of Corral and you're listening to this, um, get it. Yeah, you can order it. Well, you uh, order it because I'll, I'll have it. I'll have the box set available as a pledge level. So you'll get Catacombs of Corral plus Storms of Corral box set. Mm -hmm. um, but it's true. Like you can get Catacombs of Corral today and oh. you can also get the PDF of. The, oh, you can get Storms of Corral today. Of Corral. You yeah. can get Storms of Corral today, and you can get within, by the end of the week, the Catacombs of Corral PDF will be available. Uh, for, the, but then, for the backers, yeah. Yeah, and so, so like, a lot of that adventure is ready. Um, but, yeah, as far as add-ons, I'm not going to have the faction sets available as add-ons or any of the single figures available as add-ons. Like that's really it's, straightforward it's like, pledge. Yeah, levels. it's like seventy 
excuse to try and manage and it, it's just not going to be able to it's not yeah just keep we're going to keep anymore. the kickstarter but, real uh, focus like that but as far as stretch goals we do have we, we do got some cool stretch and, goals and yeah. uh and then another thing speaking of having run a, a, a kickstarter just in 2020 is that during covid so many logistics things changed and so that's another reason why this kickstarter didn't happen last year is because like we had a lot to do and and this project has hit so many delays to get to this point yeah and and thankfully those delays are done you know what i mean like we did it we pushed through those challenges and um and that means that almost everything is ready to hit print yeah. and order on, except the except those stretch goals. Yep, which, except those unlike stretch the goals. past, I have sculpted already. You know, like I I I went ahead and was like, I don't know that we'll unlock these, but I'll sculpt them and I can sit on a sculpt. Worst case scenario, I'll sit on a sculpt until I can afford to produce it. Yeah. But like, um, you know, as it is, I. Like we, I, we've pushed so hard to make sure everything's pretty much, well, not pretty much to make sure everything's done. Like mm -hmm. not only illustrated, not only designed and laid out, but like play tested. Yeah. I mean, y'all yeah. going to see, y'all so, going to see on Friday if you catch it yeah, up. So it's very exciting. Uh, it's, it's nerve wracking. I hate, like there's so, so much tension inside me to like go, go back to Kickstarter. And, yeah. And, and I mean, like self doubt and like all this stuff, but when I really look at what we've created, even though it feels like it's taken so long. Oh, I know. Eight, right. Um, it's so cool. It is. And you like know? you said, and it's, it is so the storms of Coral is our, you know, we're, we're like doing a little leap of faith here with a real different, system change for relic blade a mechanical mm -hmm. framework that's different and because what we want to do is really create more of this type of thing you know more yeah, of this yeah, type we're of we're building adventure. a foundation the same yeah. way as the core rules of relic blade we're building a foundation for a game that would be a really cool dynamic fantasy skirmish but when it came out it was just a knight and some pigs um in that same way, this is like this is breaking new ground for Relic Blade. It's turning it into what can be a very engaging cooperative miniatures game. Like, mm -hmm. and not like it's not like a board game that you pop open and you hand people their characters. It's way more like a miniatures game where you know you've got your figures, you've got your your characters that you care about, and you've got your collection that you care about. And you'll be able to sit at a table with your friends and be fighting side by side, back to back in this dark dungeon. Uh, you know, a dark wanderer and a cleric siding, you know, yep. as allies in this desperate bid for survival. And I'm just like, dude, this is like what Relic Blade was always supposed to be. It's I know, right? So and it, good. <laughs> it's a it's a crazy kind of like evolution of the system. Yeah. And yeah, it's like getting getting it all there is has been such a crazy and interesting experience and like we still have like really amazing um things to learn i think about this cool format and ways that we can deliver um to this because you know the truth of anything when you're creating it, it you can we could you know we could work on this forever and ever and ever all oh, be but oh, yeah. it's you know we really just want it's it's gotten to a point where it's it's nice and big and hefty it's a big old thing you know a big nice experience and we're gonna say okay boom cut it off right here let's deliver this and you know have these things available because you, you mentioned yeah. delays and one thing that i kind of want to mention uh circling back to earlier is like if you don't have um you know if you dear listener don't have the storms of Coral, or if you are kind of on the fence, you haven't gotten into Relic Blade yet. Uh, don't wait for this Kickstarter to do that. Like you can get down on the Kickstarter, please. Mm -hmm. That'd be amazing. But with the you know the time frame of things, you could be playing Relic Blade. You know, like oh yeah, to like next week. You don't have to yeah, wait be... six months or or how you know God forbid yeah, however you could long. have all your you could have all your. Uh 
Storms of Crawl figures painted before Malev. Exactly. That's that's <laughs> you. That's you have a really good chance of doing that. You know, if you <laughs> like, do that, you get a sticker. Oh uh, yes, you know, the, because a matter of fact, you tag Malev's me in the gonna, Discord right now. I will. Malev's I'll do something nice. I don't know what, real. but yeah, I'll. You know, that's that's real. That'd be that. That's realness right there. Because my goodness, yeah. But yes, there's there's so much Relic Blade action available already, and uh, Sean is waking and up it's all every good, day. All usable in yeah. In the there's solo co-op. Yep, where, you're like, literally like, just making yeah. the cushion cooler and bigger for that stuff to land on, yeah. you know. And yeah, but Sean wakes up every morning, brisk with the coffee, and starts packing them orders. So yeah. you can have stuff ASAP if you are uh, really interested in it, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah but i so i think i mean i think we've we've covered a lot of what i wanted to say but like the big thing is if i could just like bullet point it this kickstarter leads from the last kickstarter there are roots that go deep in relic blade and part of that is that this is the fulfillment of of dreams we've been having since 2016 yeah yeah especially so me <laughs> i've been silly, like oh i want it's relic silly to so be long. like oh sean's running a kickstarter he didn't tell us until like four days before but like that's how i mean you don't need you don't need five months of me whining about stuff that uh, please come to kickstarter because i've you've seen me working on it you've heard this podcast you've heard yep. us talking about pushing to try and get this stuff done and i like Really, this is the best way for me to make sure there's enough for everyone that wants it. Uh, so be sure to back the Kickstarter if you want to secure a copy. And then also, like, it makes it possible that we can do it, you know? It yeah. makes it possible that we're able to uh, create more stuff, especially as things have become more and more difficult to make things. Like, making stuff has become more and more difficult. Yeah, and so, prices of everything. Uh, it, it feels... It feels funny, like I'm not sure, you know, if I should be stoked that I have to go back to Kickstarter, but at the same time, this Kickstarter offers some of the coolest stuff that that Relic Blade has to offer, you know? Yeah. And, if, and with a two-player box set in hand, whether you ordered it in the last Kickstarter and you got your free uh, Catacombs PDF this Friday, or you ordered it in the past two years, which a ton of people have, or if you want to back and get it in the Kickstarter, like that box set is amazing. Yep. We we hit it out of the park, and this is going to uh, flow from that and take that box set and turn it into a game you can set up and play with your D and D group, with your friends. Set it up and like get a really cool, in depth tactical miniatures gameplay experience while also engaging with exciting dungeon crawling adventure. You know. Oh my goodness. So it sounds like we've got a lot of things on the, the plate coming, you know, and that's, that's, that's the stuff that is done and ready. I mean, y'all don't even want to know what's going on in the brain, in the, in the, in the lobes, <laughs> in the, in the wrinkles, you know, there's so many things, you know, but yeah, and that's the thing, like we gotta, that's all right. That's part of it. There, there aren't quite as many stretch goals as there were in past campaigns and part of that is like things are unreliable and i want to make sure we deliver yeah you know? man we really want to uh, and if i can deliver this project then you know the next project won't take two years to put together exactly you know uh, and then uh so so yeah friday 9 a.m pacific standard time boom, boom. meet me on kickstarter boom, uh, boom. support the catacombs of corral uh, uh adventure we've got awesome new figures uh we've got awesome new campaign we've got some rad stretch goals i'm really hoping we can crack i mean frankly i hope that we can crack open just the core oh i know right yeah sure we can get stretch goals sure are neat but adicomes um, of crawl that's what we're and after. then uh and then let's see what other things do we want to say yeah friday uh, oh, I I was able to secure UK uh, friendly shipping and EU friendly shipping, so that'll be good for our friends uh, over there. Very cool, and yeah, um, we know and, there's a lot. And you know, it's it's short notice. We're going into this Kickstarter. It's going to be a short campaign, ten days, two weeks, maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do two weeks, fourteen days, okay. so that we can 
just make sure if you got a chance to see it, you can back it. Uh, not going crazy. I, I mean, uh, if you have a chance to share any information about it, if you have any questions, be sure yeah. to let us know. Cause like through this campaign, we'll try to be really active. You know, Malev is, is really yeah, stepping you know... into a role as like a admin. So he'll be able to deal more directly with questions. We'll have a lot wider broad, uh, uh, bandwidth for air figuring out like answers to questions and, and responding. We've got this awesome podcast so we can chat about stuff throughout the campaign. Yeah. And worth mentioning yeah. too, one thing yeah. that's happened since the last relic buzz, now I'm realizing, Oh, it's nice. Is that we've, uh, taken out, oh, we've boom, grabbed the bull by the horns and uh, made the relic blade at relic blade Instagram. Mm -hmm. We're really uh, putting some effort into making the social media presence more cool. And we're talking about focus action articles on Monday, which generally talk about characters and relic blade, more mechanical fun build yeah. options. And then on Fridays we're doing the lore look, which is like, not only will we showcase any new illustrations, but also talks about interesting things in the Relic Blade. Like, like kind of behind-the-scenes lore, like yeah, stuff yeah. that I had put in art but never explained. Yeah, but, exactly. Really yeah. cool stuff. That and So if you're listening to this and you're not following at Relic Blade on Instagram, do that because we're going to be mm -hmm. having a lot of things, uh, you know, weekly, you know, a lot of did new you, cool did information. Did you sort out the Twitter also? Because we've got... Facebook, I did. I did it. I did it. I did get an email back for them, but yeah, we still got to yeah. talk about them because yeah, we're, we're trying to do it all. Twitter's kind of like we're trying to do it all. Problem, but uh, but yeah, we want to be able to talk to you, and we want to be able to hear what you have to say. You yeah. Know? And frankly, I mean, it's a bit funny to say that at the end of an hour long podcast because, like, if you've listened this far, you probably are already messaging. <laughs> yes. In our DMs, Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hanging out <laughs> with us, like, like, hi, auntie. <laughs> uh, but yeah 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 i think i'm really excited you know this kickstarter is gonna be short hit hard hit fast it's gonna be um it's it's really terrific content and uh and frankly i'm just like really stoked yeah man to i'm have excited to be here because because like same with you know just the social media uh keeping up with that stuff having malev help encourage me to just like take the picture and i'm like okay i can take a picture it's been such a big deal so not yeah, going we're excited this totally about it. solo is really um really encouraging um so we're going we're going in very excited and uh yeah i think that's what i wanted to tell you all about this time and hopefully we won't wait so long for the next relic buds. I mean, probably we'll record one right away. Yeah, I'm we thinking definitely started. we got some we'll, stuff to talk about for sure. Yeah, we can, we can uh, talk about how things are going. Yeah. So. All right, y'all. Thanks so much. And and again, at Relic Blade on Instagram, uh, Relic Blade Battle Friends group on Facebook, mm -hmm. a huge place, and also Relic Blade Discord at Malev Minis on Instagram at Sean Sutter mm -hmm. too. Uh, you can connect with us. We love to connect with you. It only happens because of y'all. Yeah, absolutely. It's true. And I appreciate appreciate it, Sean. Appreciate you, Sean. And I'm excited for Friday. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, and yeah. if you're Those listening to this in the future, um, listener, I hope that that you have already got your storms of coral and catacombs of coral stuff, and mm -hmm. you're like, wow, this is awesome stuff. <laughs> right <on. laughs> All right, you guys. Peace.